The Panama Canal connects the Pacific Ocean to the Caribbean Sea. 40% of global cargo traffic moves through the slender waterway. Do you know there's an artificial canal that has existed for over 100 years? It is considered part of the seven wonders of the world because of its design. It is one of the most significant and challenging engineering projects ever undertaken. Quite interesting. But sadly, this canal suddenly dried up. And now is a huge loss because it was a shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and saved sailors days of long journeys. How did the Panama Canal, which has existed for so long, dry up? Join us as we delve into the details of the Panama Canal and its mysterious dry up. For a country so wet, it's actually quite surprising that the Panama Canal suddenly dried up. Obviously, the researchers didn't just wake up to meet the dry canal. There would have been situations that contributed to this tragedy, which is what we will be discussing in today's video. But before diving in on the sad event, let's look at the history of the Panama Canal. In the 1800s, American and British leaders, together with people in business, saw the need to ship goods quickly and cheaply between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. As a result of this, the Panama Canal was built. Aside from easy transportation, the Panama Canal was also made because the U.S. aimed for global power, with both commercial and military potential. This wasn't rocket science because the Americans knew that if they could move ships easily and quickly, they would control power because they had control over the ocean. So the whole Panama Canal thing was just a geopolitical strategy. Having spoken about this, how was the Panama Canal built? The Panama Canal started as a project for France in 1881, but in 1894, it ended as it was seen as a bad job with no cause. It was first suggested to be built in 1534. Then, in 1788, Thomas Jefferson had another suggestion that it should be made. The Panama Canal cuts through the Isthmus of Panama, which separates the North and South American continents. It is a modest 77 kilometers long and rises to a mere 26 meters above sea level at Gatun Lake. There are locks which raise and lower the ships as they proceed. These locks are 33.5 meters wide. When the French people gave up on the canal building, the Americans took over. They started the construction in 1904 and announced it in 1914. It was difficult for the French to complete the project because of their lack of machines, and the use of human and animal labor. The Panama Canal was constructed through a series of steps, including the creation of Gatun Lake and Lake Madden by damming the Chagres River, excavating the Gaylard Cut between the two lakes and across the Continental Divide, constructing locks to raise vessels from the Atlantic Ocean to Gatun Lake, and another set of waves at the end of the Gaylard Cut to lower ships, and digging a channel connecting to the Pacific Ocean. It cost $336,650,000, and 240 million cubic meters of earth were vacated. The Panama Canal had a workforce of over 43,000 individuals who faced several challenges, such as severe heat, dense jungles, swamps, and the creatures that inhabited these environments, including rats that were carriers of bubonic plague. Additionally, they struggled with mosquito-borne diseases like yellow fever and malaria, resulting in the tragic loss of over 20,000 workers during the French construction efforts. After the scientific connections between insects and disease were established, the Americans launched intensive and successful anti-mosquito campaigns. Nevertheless, more than 5,000 workers met their demise during the American construction phase. The historical significance of the Panama Canal deals with the technological prowess and economic power it gave to the U.S., the U.S. gained control of both of the oceans, which was very critical at the time of war. Air power was unavailable, so the best way to win against the enemy was through the sea. Moving ships quickly from east to west was a priority to the U.S. because they could control what happened at sea. Now to the economic power. The impact this canal had on the economy was massive, and the reason is pretty far-fetched. Imagine the unison of the trade between the two oceans. Global trade was as significant then as it is now, and it was essential to have a joint route across the continent. The canal held a vital role in the United States' self-perception as a benevolent global force. As the U.S. rose as a world power, it aimed to distinguish itself from Europe's older powers, 
often viewed as driven by the pursuit of power, control, and colonialism. The U.S. sought to present a vision of itself as selfless and dedicated to advancing civilization worldwide. It's important to note, however, that the U.S. sometimes imposed its power despite this self-image, notably in Panama, where it exerted dominance over the Republic for a century. Nevertheless, the canal remains integral to the American national identity, symbolizing this benevolent self-image. The Panama Canal has helped to reduce greenhouse gas emissions on our planet by enabling more efficient maritime transportation of goods. It also saved fossil fuels by reducing fuel consumption per cargo unit. So why did the Panama Canal suddenly dry up if it was one of the world's wettest countries? Well, it dried up due to the El Nino pattern. This is when the Pacific Ocean surface warms up more than usual. The region surrounding the canal was struggling with a significant meteorological challenge as rainfall has dropped sharply to levels approximately 30 to 50 percent lower than the historical average. This ongoing meteorological phenomenon marks one of the driest periods in Panama's recorded history, spanning 143 years. This noteworthy data, sourced from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute (STRI), serves as an alarming indicator of the ecological stress the area is currently facing. Panama is one of 36 countries that includes no emissions reduction target in its climate pledge for the Paris Agreement. However, Panama is responsible for just 0.03% of global emissions, one thirtieth of the amount the UK emits. But the story is also more complex than climate impacts alone, according to Contreras. Over the years, there have been several factors acting simultaneously, he says. It's not a cause problem, it's a more systematic problem. At the heart of the Panama Canal's operational efficiency lies Gatun Lake, the principal reservoir responsible for sustaining the massive vessels that traverse the canal. Under normal circumstances, this reservoir's water levels should have benefited from the recent wet season. However, the reality stands in stark contrast, as water levels in Gatun Lake have stubbornly clung to readings below what would be considered typical or optimal. The Panama Canal's operation depends on water sourced from nearby freshwater lakes. Utilizing a lock system, substantial quantities of water, at least 50 million gallons, are used to facilitate the passage of each vessel through the canal. Usually, during this season, lake levels tend to rise. However, Panama has experienced its lowest spring and summer rainfall since the beginning of the century, as reported by John Davis, the chief meteorologist at Everstream Analytics. Commenting on the situation, he noted that while this doesn't necessarily mean freshwater lake levels will decline, there's little sign of significant improvement in the coming month. Furthermore, the intensifying El Nino phenomenon, as supported by various climate models projecting its escalation throughout the rest of this year and into early 2024, is a long-term concern. This situation could result in even drier conditions across the southern part of Central America, including Panama. Davis expressed that they can't predict the extent of disruptions or how congested the supply chain might become, but it appears they are heading in the direction of increasingly challenging circumstances. The escalating population in Panama City has generated increased demand for water. Furthermore, the expansion of agriculture in the area has led to the degradation of natural ecosystems, diminishing the land's capacity to retain moisture. Modifications to the canal itself have further strained water resources. Panama executed a $5 billion, 3.8 billion pounds, expansion of the canal, significantly enhancing its capacity to accommodate larger vessels, albeit at the cost of more significant water usage. These water shortages will not only impact the operations of the Panama Canal. Still, they will also affect the lives of over 2 million residents in neighboring towns, including Panama City, who rely on Gatun and nearby Lake Alajuela for their water supply. However, Panama's constitution stipulates that human consumption must take precedence over other uses. Are there any consequences of the Panama Canal drying up? The U.S. body did try to prevent the drought from drying up. The U.S. used seawater for the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal relies on a system of locks to raise and lower ships as they pass through the canal.
These locks use seawater from the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans to fill and empty the chambers, allowing ships to traverse the canal. This design was a crucial part of the engineering and operation of the canal. It's quite unfortunate that even after all the precautions taken, the Panama Canal still dried up. Stephen Payton, a scientist affiliated with STRI, has drawn attention to the implications of this water scarcity. He warns that there is a looming threat of an early onset of Panama's dry season, aggravated by unusually elevated temperatures, a hallmark characteristic of significant El Nino events. Such conditions could amplify the natural evaporation process from Gatun Lake, leading to the ominous possibility of witnessing water levels reduced to near record lows by the time March or April of 2024 roll around. This confluence of factors raises many concerns, not only for the operation of the canal itself, but also for the broader ecological equilibrium in this vital region. The sustainability of the canal's functioning, the impact on surrounding ecosystems, and the potential repercussions throughout the country are all subjects of apprehension as Panama struggles with the challenges posed by this extraordinary meteorological issue. The drought could be more favorable to the shipping of goods. To adhere to the limitations enforced by the Panama Canal Authority, shipping carriers find themselves compelled to either unload their cargo or explore alternative navigational routes. This drafted response stems from the regulatory measures implemented by the canal's governing body, which have reduced the maximum allowable weights for ships and limited the daily number of ship passages. These measures are being undertaken as part of a concerted effort by the government agency to preserve the vital water resources of the Panama Canal. The prevailing drought conditions have resulted in a lack of water replenishment. Consequently, ship owners are faced with a limited set of choices. They can either reduce their cargo loads, leading to extended voyages spanning thousands of additional kilometers, or contend with the extensive queues that, just a few weeks ago, caused congestion with as many as 160 vessels waiting and led to delays of up to 21 days for certain ships. In response to this challenging situation, the Panama Canal Authority has recently taken measures to alleviate the congestion. They have introduced two additional daily passage slots for ships that don't hold priority status, such as container ships. As a result, the backlog, which had reached 160 ships, has gradually decreased to the current count of 115 vessels this week. In August, the average wait time for ships went from less than a week to nearly a week and a half, creating a bottleneck. At one point, more than 160 ships were hanging out, waiting for a Panama official to swipe right. Panama finds itself in the grip of an enduring 20-year drought, and the consequences are increasingly stark as its people face a challenging dilemma. They must choose between securing potable drinking water or maintaining the essential water levels within the Panama Canal. The water level of Gatun Lake, the primary reservoir that sustains the canal, has been reduced by nearly 8 feet over the past year. This deficit has placed immense strain on the operation of the canal, as each vessel that undertakes this critical passage consumes an astonishing 51 million gallons of water sourced from the lake. The future appears increasingly intimidating, as Panamanian authorities anticipate that these water scarcities will persist well into the coming year. The complex trade-off between sustaining the nation's water resources for daily life and keeping the Panama Canal fully operational presents a challenge with far-reaching implications for both the people of Panama and global trade. The repercussions of the Panama drought extend far beyond the immediate trade bottlenecks as the country braces for a considerable loss in potential trade revenue amounting to tens of millions of dollars. Yet, this economic strain is but the tip of the iceberg. The Panama Canal, a vital conduit for global commerce, handles a remarkable 3% of the world's total trade volume and an impressive 16% of all trade bound for the United States. The emergence of bottlenecks within this crucial maritime passageway threatens to ripple across the international economic landscape, leading to price escalations that reverberate worldwide. Evidence of this impact is already evident, as the cost of shipping goods from China to the eastern coast of the United States has surged by a substantial 36%, directly attributed to the constraints imposed by the Panama drought. Unfortunately, 
this escalation in shipping costs is poised to climb even higher as Gatun Lake's water levels continue their worrisome decline. This confluence of factors paints a bleak economic landscape, where both Panama's trade revenue and global trade dynamics are entangled in a complex and potentially costly web of consequences. The ongoing drought carries grave national security implications for the United States. Since its inauguration in 1914, the Panama Canal has played a pivotal role in facilitating the swift movement of military vessels between America's east and west coast. However, should the canal persist in its water scarcity, a dangerous scenario emerges. Specifically, the operational effectiveness of America's second fleet, headquartered in Hampton Roads, Virginia, could be significantly compromised, potentially leading to its disconnection from the third fleet, based in San Diego, California. This geographical disjunction would have profound repercussions, as it would drastically curtail the U.S.'s capacity to expeditiously deploy naval assets to the Western Pacific Ocean, especially in response to significant threats posed by nations such as China. The implications of this logistical challenge reverberate throughout national security, underscoring the connections between the Panama Canal's functionality and America's strategic readiness. It's fascinating how, at one point, English-speaking nations controlled almost every key maritime passageway and entrance worldwide. It's like a historical twist of fate. What's even more interesting is how this situation, as described by the late Herbert W. Armstrong in his book The United States and Britain in Prophecy, all started with a promise given to Abraham way back when. You see, according to Genesis 22:17, God pledged to give Abraham's descendants control over the gates of their adversaries. These gates are essentially narrow points of entry and exit. On a national scale, think of a sea gate as something like the Panama Canal, a vital choke point. So, as the story goes, God granted Britain and America control over these essential commercial gateways, essentially setting them on the path to becoming economic and military powerhouses. Yet, it's not all milk and honey, as there's a bit of a story. God also issued a warning, a rather serious one. He cautioned that if America and Britain didn't toe the line and follow his guidance, not only would they lose control of these sea gates, but those very gates would end up working against them. Fast forward to today, and we're seeing elements like drought and China's assertiveness, making the Panama Canal less advantageous for America than ever before. It's a remarkable testament to the interplay of history, faith, and geopolitics. The Panama Canal operates around the clock, every day of the year, which is very demanding. Currently, the canal is undergoing an extensive renovation project. The ongoing enhancements encompass the following. Expanding the Gillard Cut, which is the narrowest section, from 500 feet to 630 feet, enabling two-way Panamax traffic for the first time. Upgrading the 80-year-old electromechanical lock machinery with hydraulic systems. Incorporating 26 new locomotives to assist in maintaining vessels' positions while in the locks. Rehabilitating 53,000 feet of locomotive tow track. Expanding the towboat fleet. While the transit time for a vessel, approximately 24 hours, has remained relatively consistent over the past two decades, the waiting period to enter the canal, at times lasting up to a week, has steadily increased. Following these improvements, the transit time and the waiting period are expected to decrease. The Panama Canal Authority, ACP, is designing enhancements to increase the depth of Gatun Lake. Deepening the lake will augment its water storage capacity, providing an additional 300 million gallons of water annually, equating to a 25% increase in usable storage volume. This added ability ensures heightened reliability and caters to the growing population around the canal. The future of the Panama Canal is promising for both the world and Panama. The shipping industry relies heavily on the canal for transporting cargo, and Panama's economy benefits from the canal's operations. The canal, which has once tamed nature's barriers, now finds itself vulnerable to the changing forces of nature. The Panama Canal is a testament to human accomplishment and the robust partnership between the United States and Panama. It calls upon us to acknowledge the significance of varied contributions, the pressing need for environmental preservation, and the resilience of inter-American cooperation. If you enjoyed this video, 
give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more content like this.